In 2005, this film came out. Two years later, a film critic pointed out how poorly the female lead was written. People talked about it. A lot. They pointed out other characters like this, though they got some of them wrong. And then, in 2013, the cut decided that the trope was dead. But that's not where the story of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl ends. First of all, the trope arguably still does exist, if not on the screen, then certainly in the subconscious of real-life people. But as you can probably guess from the title of this video, not all women were equally affected by this trope. That's because the Manic Pixie Dream Girl's traits are almost entirely based off neurodivergent traits. Okay, let's back up. Film critic Nathan Rabin, who coined the term, defined a Manic Pixie Dream Girl, or MPDG, as a female character who exists solely in the fevered imaginations of sensitive writer-directors to teach broodingly soulful young men to embrace life and its infinite mysteries and adventures. In layman's terms, it was a criticism of quirky female love interests with no goals or purpose other than teaching the male protagonist some important life lesson. I have a gift. Special ability to help men with problems. And that criticism was good, and accurate, but also caused some problems. Nathan Rabin himself has apologized for coining the term, due to how often it leads people to completely writing off female characters with remotely quirky interests and labeling them as MPDGs, even when they might actually be quite complex. Too many guys think I'm a concept, or I complete them, or I'm gonna make them alive. But I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Don't assign me yours. A view on this trope that I personally like is the idea that the woman here isn't the problem, it's the guy. I think that's perhaps the least nuanced thing I've ever said, so let me elaborate. Having a female character who does quirky things and is extroverted and bubbly and all those things is not inherently a problem. The bigger issue is the male main character who simply soaks up what the MPDG has to offer and kind of brings nothing to the table. She has men dying at her feet. When we criticize this trope, it should be a criticism of the male character, or the lack of complexity in writing the MPDG, not the MPDG herself. People sometimes mistakenly hate the female character for the way she acts, instead of hating the people who wrote the character to be one-dimensional and without nuance, or hating the male character for viewing her as a one-dimensional person who exists simply for the man's character development. Essentially, it's not a problem that these girls are unique. It's a problem that their character is defined by a man's story instead of their own. I could go into further detail on this character, because it's a concept that has certainly impacted my life, but it's also a concept that has been discussed to death. So let's cut to the chase. Now that we've established what defines an MPDG, let's talk about how that relates to neurodivergence. And by the way, I'm using neurodivergence here as a really broad term throughout this video, seeing as the MPDG often intersects with autism, BPD, ADHD, and more, not just a singular mental illness. So in short, most of the traits associated with the Manic Pixie Dream Girl are also neurodivergent traits. They have big imaginations, they're impulsive and energetic, have difficulty focusing, they disregard social norms. You know what I do when I feel completely unoriginal? Love, 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 love. I, I make a noise or I do something that no one has ever done before and then I can feel unique again. Though these characters are never labeled as neurodivergent, they almost always have traits that imply it. And of course, the most significant evidence of the correlation between the MPDG and neurodivergence is how many neurodivergent women can often identify with the traits of the MPDG. Though a common criticism of this character is that she couldn't possibly exist in real life, which is true in that no women so one-dimensional exist, there are actually quite a few neurodivergent women who identify with many of their traits. When I say that the traits of a manic pixie dream girl are described as too otherworldly to actually be real, that's how a lot of autistic women grow up to feel too, like aliens. So maybe that's not so bad, right? Could this in fact be a trope that finally offers neurodivergent women the representation they lack? In short, no. Absolutely not. Let's talk about why. The general idea of fetishizing mental illness, especially in film, is nothing new. It's not uncommon for men both in real life and film to want the eccentricity, bubbliness, and often hypersexual nature that they assume neurodivergent women all exhibit. But the MPDG in particular was long thought of as a trope that was simply harmful to women, not specifically neurodivergent women. 
but with the understanding that MPDGs almost always exhibit neurodivergent traits, comes the understanding that MPDGs are really bad representation for neurodivergent women. It's not just women who are shown as people who only exist to facilitate a man's growth, it's neurodivergent women, which is even more harmful due to the already existent stereotypes about them. The MPDG reduces neurodivergent women to a concept, to guardian angels that will fix broken men and teach them life lessons. This is your comfort zone. All the things that you want in the world are way out there. This can mean that women with certain mental illnesses can be viewed by men as real-life MPDGs, as countless social media threads by neurodivergent women recount. This on-screen fetishization, along with its impact on neurodivergent women's dating lives, also manifests itself in the form of sexual violence, especially through its portrayal of neurodivergent women as hypersexual. I'll race you to the bedroom. This unfortunately plays out in very real contexts. I won't get into specifics, but overall, sexual assault and violence rates tend to be disproportionately high against neurodivergent women. Ultimately, one of the key traits of the MPDG is that the relationship between her and the main character doesn't last. She's fun for a while, but in the long run, she's just too much. What seemed like adorable quirks when we were dating now look like... Look, I don't want to say my wife is handicapped, but she is way more than a special snowflake. This is very likely a reflection of how neurodivergent women are often viewed. A 2012 study showed that men find women who appear psychologically vulnerable more attractive. However, they're less likely to want to pursue long-term relationships with them. In film, neurodivergent traits are, as Nisha Dolan puts it, diluted to appeal to the desires of neurotypical men. These characters are aloof, but they don't have mood swings. They're impulsive, but they don't exhibit aggressive behaviors. In short, they're not real women. They instead mainly exist to tap into the male desire for quote unquote crazy girls. How come the deeply troubled women? Yes. You know, deeply, deeply troubled. Right. They're always the best at that. You don't want to be with them for the long term, but for the short term, there's nothing like it. These characters are fantasies, not realistic characters, nor good representation for neurodivergent people. So let's start writing Manny Pixie Dream Girls who are far more fleshed out and call them what they are neurodivergent characters. And while we're at it, let's try not making them all white, cis, straight, able-bodied, and skinny. That said, it's unrealistic to expect filmmakers to change everything about a trope, so they can keep the colorful hair. The colorful hair is pretty cool. Quirky, messy women whose problems only make them endearing are not real. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this trope in the comments, and as always, any requests for future videos.